So here's an example of a hitter that I worked with a couple days ago from Connecticut. Awesome player, sophomore in high school, really fantastic person, super fast learner, very attentive. We did two hours of work. And so this swing over here on the left is the final round that we did. This is her very first swings of the day. Uh, the only difference here is that this pitch is coming from straight ahead. And this one's on a little bit of an angle. You can see that's why she's set up a little bit more looking this way versus looking this way. Um, but this is what can happen in a really short period of time. Again, we did an assessment. Uh, we looked at how she was moving. We talked for about 10 minutes or so about what she's done well, what she hasn't done well, what she struggles with. I tried to collect as much information as possible from her based on her play this fall and this past summer since I, I have not been able to see her playing games. This was the first time that I saw her hit. We broke down video. We put a game plan together and then we started to get to work on that. Now, after looking at her video, we're going to look at this one real quick. The biggest things that I saw and these matched up with what she was feeling in games, her results in games. So the first thing that she talked about was that she would struggle against slower pitching. She'd be out front. Her timing wasn't as good. She also would feel like she was across the zone a little bit with her swing, would ground out to the left side more than she wanted to. And so if you look at her swing, you'll see that she, the first thing that stood out to me was that she, she makes a pretty aggressive move forward. She had a tendency to want to start to shift her weight forward a bit too early. This caused her to want to throw her hands and bat out at the ball. So she really tried to hit everything way out in front. Not that she tried to, but she just did. Her barrel also, you can see, doesn't turn up as well. So her lead arm works down, her barrel attacks down, and it also wants to go to the left. Anytime we have hitters that typically want to work down, they'll also go to the left. So they're not from the inside. They're not through the hitting zone as well as they want to be. And so again, we're trying to get our hitters to be from the inside, to be as short and quick as possible, to be able to get the barrel in the zone early so that we're in the zone for a long time. We want to be able to get the barrel turned slightly up into the ball. And so after watching her take swings, you know, we identify what we want to do, and then we talk about how we're going to do that. And so here's the game plan. The first thing we have to do is we have to do a better job of staying around this leg for a bit longer instead of getting jumpy. Anytime we start to shift or jump into our front side early, it causes us to want to go out with our hands, attack down through the ball too much, and typically leads to being in and out of the zone very quickly. And so if we do a better job of loading this rear leg and then staying around this leg as we move out, I talked about controlling our weight. So we've got to control our weight around our back leg so that we can wait for the ball. That improves our ability to wait for the ball. So it improves your timing. So that's, that's the first thing we really worked on, getting our hips coiled, getting around this leg. If we look over here, you can see we started to kind of preset that move a little bit. And so you can see that the hips are slightly more coiled. The legs loaded back a bit more. The back pocket is turned towards the pitcher. As she picks up, you can really notice that here, the difference in lower bodies. And if you look at her stride now, it's a little bit smaller, but it's much more controlled. We're moving in tighter spaces, right? You can see the back leg staying loaded longer and loaded more, right? So this is these swings are, are synced up. This leg is already going. This leg is still loaded back. So when that happens, now I'm around this leg longer. When I turn, my turn is going to happen much deeper. I'm going to be able to get my upper body to work behind this right leg instead of wanting to work in front of it. I'm going to stay on the ball. I'm not going to pull off the ball. I'm going to work more north-south with my upper body. I'm going to be able to turn my barrel back more. And now you can see I can start to get in the zone much earlier. So everything is happening tighter on the left versus on the right. It wants to be kind of out and down to the ball. You can see how she's able to turn the barrel slightly up into the ball. So that's the first thing that we did. We worked on, again, staying around this leg, staying in good posture, chest over, butt out, and then holding that coil and keeping that leg loaded as we stride it out. With the upper body, we didn't really change a whole lot. 
you see a little bit more roll in of her front shoulder because she's coiling more. Again, it's a little more exaggerated here because I'm flipping just a tad bit from an angle. Now that really sets everything up. I think that this is really the foundation. If we don't do a good job of staying around this leg as we move forward, then it's going to throw other parts of the swing off. So once we worked on that, went through a bunch of drills, then we were able to, that alone changed a lot in her swing. But then we started working on the upper body being able to work a little bit more north-south instead of pulling off. And again, a lot of that cleaned up just by the way that we controlled our weight. And then we worked on drills to try to get palm up, palm down, and get the knob turned back a little bit more. I wanted to try to get the barrel to stay a little bit more vertical and not flatten out. So what she did here is she would start to flatten the barrel out. So see how this barrel just starts to flatten out behind her? And then once it got here, now it had to try to fight to get around her body. So what would happen is she'd start to pull this way, and then this arm would get extended, the hands would get out over the plate more, and then they would start to want to cut across. And so what we did is we tried to keep the barrel a little bit more vertical and try to get it to go from go, instead of flattening out and then trying to get around the body, from go, we just get palm up, palm down, we start to turn the knob, and the barrel is going to work back. You can see it flattens out just a bit, but then it starts to work back. And so now as it starts to turn, it's turning more from the inside, right? And so you can see here we're getting a little bit more push and a little bit more extended out over the plate as this arm straightens out this way. And here we're able to be tighter, closer to the body, turning the barrel deeper, starting to get turned palm up, palm down earlier. Right, just better depth, more behind the ball. And so now I'm already getting turned up into the ball right here. From this point on, if she were late on a pitch, she could hit this ball and hit it to right field. If she's on time, she smashes that ball to center. If she's a little bit early, she can pull the ball. But she's in the zone longer with this swing. She's inside the ball longer. She has better direction. You can see her lead arm now working up instead of down. It's not fully extended. There's a slight bend in it. That's because there's more depth to her swing, right? This space in here is, is smaller than this space right here because she wants to go hit everything so far out front. Right? And so now I can wait longer to see the pitch. I can gather more information because I'm making the pitch do the work. If I can make the pitch do the work and I can hit the ball deeper, more consistently, well, that gives me, it's like pushing the pitcher back. It gives me more time to see what pitch it is, what location it is. I get to the ball quicker, right? I'm able to get from here to here much quicker. We talk a lot about back quickness than I am to get from here all the way out to here. When we talk about hitting the ball out front, damage is done out front. If you're going to pull the ball, if it's going to get in the air, you're going to hit the ball slightly more out front. But it, you have to be able to also hit the ball deeper. You can't only be able to hit the ball out front. If you do, you have to guess more. You have to swing earlier with less information. You won't be as good of a two-strike hitter. And so we want to be able to hit the ball deep, but also be able to hit the ball out front. Right? So she can hit the ball anywhere here. You can see in her follow through how different it is. This one kind of slicing down and across. The one on the left barrel is just turning, boom, hits it, just continues to turn. But the direction is through the hitting zone much better, whereas the one on the right is across the hitting zone. So really great work by her in only two hours. It's a really, really short amount of time. She came from, I think, a two and a half hour drive. And so we did a two hour session. But I was able to give her a ton of information, go through a ton of drills, get her a better understanding of what she's trying to do and why she's trying to do it. And now we made a lot of adjustments and she can go on her way and work on her own for a little bit. And then she'll come back and we'll reevaluate, make sure she's continuing to progress um, and getting better. And that's kind of how we work. So um, if you want to work with me, let me know. Uh, my schedule is really crazy right now. We're getting towards the baseball softball season, and so yeah, I'm pretty jam-packed, but I'll try to work you in. Also, we have a swing course. If you click the description box down below, you'll see it there. 
All the drills that I did with her are included in that course, as well as my explanations for the four core principles that we talk about exactly what I broke down with her during our lesson. So all that information is available there. So definitely check that out. That's all I have. Great work. I wish everyone good luck as you are all getting closer to your seasons and we will talk to you later. If you've got hitters that you're looking to improve before the start of next season, this is essential for you. Matt Antonelli here, former major league player, first round pick and college coach. With this course, we're gonna show you exactly step-by-step step, how to generate power, develop bat speed and enhance swing mechanics. Regardless of your hitter's age, this course is going to deliver advanced hitting techniques that will allow any hitter to get better and make an impact at the plate this spring. We have a full catalog of training content that you can access from anywhere at any time. This course is perfect for players, parents, coaches, instructors, and more. It offers a comprehensive package of drills and techniques that you can directly implement. Our course has helped hitters all over the country at different competition levels, and the feedback that we've received has been outstanding. The work you put in now will drive your success at the plate this spring. Get the essential knowledge that you need to take your game to the next level.